Okay, so I'm bringing in my last cloud reference. I went ahead and made it really big. And I'm going to use that simple trick of rolling it out. So it's like a sheet of cookie dough. So I'm going to transform it and warp it and just push it to the edges. It's a big puffy cloud. So that my creature layer, a lot of pixels. So that my creature layer is going to fit over the top of it. So if I take the opacity down, I can see that. And then I am simply going to go to my creature layer, my base cloud layer, select the empty space around it using the magic wand with contiguous off. So it gets all those little nooks and crannies. And then say select and then invert the selection. And then copy that from the smart layer. And then delete the smart layer. So now I have a bunch of these cutout layers all layered on top of each other, just like I did with the sky. And what I could do is just play with them, you know, play with their opacity a tiny bit. But you always want to leave the base layer at 100%. So already that does a lot to give me some complexity on the internal edges. And then added to that, I've got these other cloud assets sitting on top. And some smart layers I can still steal from. So I've got one, two, here, let's move my guy up here, turn him on, and lock him. So I've got one, two, three, four, five different cloud asset layers. All somewhat softened some with a little bit of blue still in them, right? I can play with the arrangement of them for sure. Definitely play with the opacity of them. But what I need to do is get something that looks like this and looks believable as a cloud. So I'm gonna open this up in preview, just this standalone cloud. And I'm going to shrink it into the corner. Just keep it open in preview. And that's going to be kind of my cloud logic <laughs> image. So I can see how the lighting should work, how the edges should work, how some of the edges get transparent. But I don't need to be afraid of some, some sharp edges because clouds really have some sharp edges. So how do I now start... Um, making this right. So the easiest thing to do would be to take all of my full flat layers and put them on a on the bottom, right? So I have my just floating things on top. And now I want to really work with the floating things. But in order to match the floating things, which I kind of like the uh, the neutral color of them. You see how the base layer is very yellow. I'm going to go to my base layers and I'm going to play with color balance. So one at a time, I'm going to turn them off, turn the other layers off, go up to 100% and go to image adjustment levels. And the first thing I'll do is I'm going to try to tweak the middle tones so that they have the same value range as the clouds that I'm trying to match. Either these or these, right? The value range is the lights and darks. So I might need to exaggerate the highlights a little bit, but not blast them out, right? Just a little bit. And I might need to even limit the darks a little bit. Or limit the highlights, depending on what you're trying to match. Now, obviously, the color is off. So I have to go to Image, Adjustment, Levels. We've done all this before. I've done the levels. Now I need to do the color balance. And I'm going to shift it away from cyan in the midtones and away from green and away from yellow. And look, it's starting to blend a lot better already. Now if I go to highlights, just little touches. If I go to shadows, I want a little less purple in the shadows. Go 
that some shadows are different in different layers, right? Okay, so that, that helped a lot. Now I can go to the next one. Put it at 100%. Play with levels. I like the shadows on the feet, but they can't be as dark. So I'm going to limit those quite a bit. I'm going to play with the midtones. Play with the highlights. Now, I, now I'm going to play with the color balance. So levels and color balance. Very important before we start doing a lot of erasing, a lot of clone stamping. If your colors are all over the place, it's going to make your job really difficult, clone stamping and getting things to match. We're trying to make it all kind of like the same, same brand of uh, cotton balls. It's like you bought Walgreens and CVS cotton balls. One's pinker, one's greener. It makes it really hard to blend them together. Right, so we're trying to make them all match right now. Okay, next. This one's very yellow. And this is the one I actually started with. So it's already, already at 100%. Levels. This is my base cutout layer. But it's actually a really, really subtle cloud texture for most of it. I need to really limit those, those dark darks. And then I need to play with the color balance and get a lot of that yellow out. And then a lot of that magenta out. So this is testing your, your ability to change the color information, the color temperature information. In photography, this is called the white balance. We're trying to get the same white balance for each image. Now you might think the easiest way would be just to desaturate them all, so they're just black, white, and gray, no color at all. And yes, that would match them all, but it wouldn't look like a believable cloud because color is a big part to clouds, the subtlety in the chromatic grays. All right, so now that's my base layer. That's the next one. That's the next one. Now I can play with the opacity and it's going to be more effective. So even though it's a really sharp edge shape, that's already, I squint and that's starting to look like the right coloring on that sky. Now I can start bringing this stuff in and thinking, okay, how can I uh, delete them, merge them? So I did three cutouts, but I don't want to have to delete from all three of them at different times. So instead, let me see. I'm going to do a little bit of merging and deleting right now. So I'm going to use a soft edged eraser, not at 100%, but at like 45%. And looking at my creature and thinking where the shadows are, I'm going to start erasing out those shadows like on the bottom sides of the cloud feet. This is just revealing lower layers, right? Oops. If I overdo it, Command Z is very helpful. History is very helpful. I can even do a little bit to reveal a face, though I don't want to get too, yeah, like, I want it to look like a cloud first and a creature second. See, it's starting to get there. And then you don't have vertical columns, right, in clouds, and you don't really have ankles in clouds or vertical columns like this. So I might start getting rid of those on certain layers as well. And then I'm going to show you a non-destructive way we can get rid of those layers. 
or merge them together so I can just erase once and do a final pass. But I'm trying to do all the internal stuff first. Yeah, okay, so I think that's about as much as I can get away from just those three. So now I'm going to select all three of them, just like I was going to put them in a group together, and I'm going to hit Command-J. And what Command-J does when you, when you select multiple layers is it makes copies of all of them, and then I'm going to merge those. So layer, merge layers, E, only the ones selected. I'm going to turn these ones off, or I might put them in a group on their own. I'll call these my base clouds. All right, so I have my sky group, which I'll label blue. I'm just being really organized. My base clouds, which I'll label yellow. And now I have the merged merge group underneath. Now all three of those are a completely new cloud that I have created. Completely unrecognizable from the other clouds. They're layered on top of each other and they're like little things are peeking, peeking out. Now I can start using that soft edged eraser and biting away at the things I think are less believable at a lower opacity using my stylus. Like this little column. Anywhere I have kind of a strong vertical. I don't see any of those in the cloud over here. And try not to rely too much on your memory of what clouds look like. Try to look at your reference. And you don't need to match your character's shape exactly. So for instance, I might take this one, do a little internal compositing here, and I might transform it and have it overlap the other clouds a little bit because a lot of what makes a cloud look like it's something, I'll warp it to, is that you have clouds that are nearer to the viewer and ones that are further away and they, they cast shadows on each other. So you'll have these internal edges that can be really interesting. Nope, don't want to do that. All right, and then what edges don't make sense? Well, these little, yeah, like really tight frills, those don't make sense. Okay, so by doing that, now I can bring in the other layers on top and start biting away from them and start moving them into place where I think they'll be the most helpful. Always being aware of hard edges. Let my base layer create the hard edges for me. Let this just create other aspects, right? And feel free to internally composite a lot. Moving aspects around. So if I want this to be the mouth, to suggest the upper lip, I can do that. Now the great thing about using a soft edged eraser at a lower opacity is if you just hit it a lot of times, you'll get back down to full opacity and just reveal your base layer. Now where do I need a shadow like that? And this time I'll hit Command J. Instead of just moving it, I'll move it onto its own layer. And maybe I'll use this a little bit for my eye. Right, to suggest my eye. And then just start erasing around that, blending it in, getting rid of all those blues, but having a little bit of those internal shadows and hard edges. Right? And then, of course, I can always just take the overall opacity of it down. And that starts to suggest a mouth and an eye. And when I'm happy with it, I can merge those layers together. There's no, like I said, there's no um, virtue to having too many layers. So once you're happy with your internal compositing, go ahead and hit Command-E. Select the two layers, hit Command-E, 